the ladders on the back, the, the boat's going up and down yeah. in the waves, and you're be, being able to actually grab that ladder without it hitting you and, and getting up. Uh, um, yeah, mostly you can't, so you have to go amidships at the lowest part, and that's where you're going to get aboard from. And there's no ladder there, so you're relying on, uh, you probably don't have the arm strength to lift yourself with all your wet clothes out of the water. So now you're relying on getting a boom out, getting the sheets on, lock and take, yeah, you know, very boat specific stuff that is is not that easy to do. How are we for time? We are just about. So okay. the moral of the story is if you don't leave your couch, you'll never fall overboard. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point. If you don't leave the couch, you'll never fall overboard. If you, if you don't leave port and take risks, you'll, you'll, you'll never have to deal with that. Sail in warm waters. <laughs> Sail in warm waters. Well, that that it has its advantages too. <laughs> I'm not quite going so far as to say I'm only going to sail in warm waters, but there, it does have that going for it. It's easier and more comfortable to sail in warm waters. The other uh, summary point is when you talk about getting places, the old saying is you can have place or time, but not both. You can have place or time, but not both. Yeah, yep. that's true. <laughs> Could you just give us a few minutes on sailing through the Northwest Passage? Uh, have we got time for that? All right, sure. Yes. People can leave if they wish. It's a quarter to one. If you choose, I mean, a quarter to two. If you choose to leave, fine. But okay. I'm more than happy to have a little bit on the Northwest Passage. Okay. Uh, maybe I should, I should do my Northwest Passage talk again. Uh, <laughs> you could. So uh, the Northwest Passage, the I don't have a chart handy. Um, Did you go back to around, your, around, the world, around the world map? Or was it uh, yeah, that's easy right. to do. Yeah. Uh, so the, the trick with the Northwest Passage is you never know until you're up there if you can get through that year or not. And what so were you sailing on when you did that? I, you assume my 50 foot uh, stasis schooner Asuma, which is, uh, mm -hmm. it appeared in a, if you saw the scooter a few yeah. times in these pictures, that's Yeah, that's you're it. 50 foot. Um, and how many on the crew? Uh, I had two crew with me. Okay. So if, if you, the thing is, the Northwest Passage is the most difficult ice section, the last to freeze and the first to, to, uh, to refreeze, is, is roughly in this area. And there's also a difficult section here. Uh, but usually this is the, the real deciding one on whether you can get through that summer or not. You have to get, it's, if, it's gonna, if it's gonna break up, it's, it's gonna be mid-August when that happens. And then you've gotta race through. So you gotta get all the way up here. This is a few thousand miles north, like 75 degrees north roughly, to get up to here and get in. And, and this is where the difficult ice section begins. If you're not up here, for mid-August, like if you wait uh, to, to find out if, if it's gonna clear that year or not, you're not gonna be able to make it through because you're gonna run out of, out of time. But see, you're in a race, once you do this, you're in a race to get all the way through and then through that Bering Sea, and then um, as autumn is starting, you know, Bering Sea being a really rough place. You have a similar problem if you're going west to east. It's, it's really rough in the autumn in the Labrador Sea, Baffin Bay, and here, this is, in the case of going west to east, you go all the way here to find out if you can get through that year or not. And if you can't, your choice is either to go all the way back, because there's no good place to leave a boat there, or to leave your boat up north for the winter. Um, that's, that's some of the, that's one of the tough parts of the Northwest Passage, is, is whether you can get through here or not. And, and it just depends on the year, and you have no idea yeah, on any given year, if you can get through or not. Like last year, I think 20 boats got through. The year before, too. Um, you have no idea until you, and you gotta get up there and get in position to get through. And then that's when you're gonna find out if you're gonna get through that year or not. That's, how long does it take? How long does it take? Uh, so mid-August, um, that was, September, that was the end, I think the end of September, I was 
here? Is that charm and the illusions? Six weeks. Um, yeah. Um, you know, and that depends how much ice there is. You've got, uh, the later in the summer, the more darkness, the more darkness, the more, uh, the less visibility. So, so if you're sailing in an area around ice, you've got to slow down in case you hit the ice. So you know, how fast you can go depends on how far away you can see the ice. So if, if the lighter you go, the, the less, the, the slower you will go in because the less you can get done in a day, less miles you can go in a day. Because they, the food be getting dark up there mid-September. Yeah. yeah, so you, you have 24 hour daylight, you know, around at the end of June and July, but then okay. you start to get longer and longer nights in, in August and, and in September you, you'll have roughly half and half, 12 hour. Yeah. If that much. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you don't get through, are you stuck there for the winter? Or? If, you, if you don't get through, are you stuck there for the winter? Well, you're, you're either stuck there for the winter or you've got to come back down. And, and so uh, some people come back down, uh, some people stay for the winter. But you're, uh, there's only, a, the, depending on how big your boat is, you may or may not be able to haul it out for the winter. You might have to just winter it in the ice, um, and, and depending on where you are, uh, it's it's quite a concern. Uh, you, I mean, I had food in, in case I had like some breakdown or something like that. I mean, I, I had food and provisions that I could spend the winter if necessary. Yeah. David, did you stop at the sportsman's at, in Whittier? Did I stop at the sportsman's looks in like, Whittier? It looks like you went to Whittier on the upper I, left, going around the Aleutian Islands. I, 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 I skipped Whittier. No. Oh. I, so I missed, I missed that. Uh, Any other I, comments I, or questions? If, if people are interested, I, I've been trying to remember, that. I think there's a book called no, North to the, let's see, North to the Night. It's anyways, it's about, about a couple, a uh, Canadian couple who, decided they wanted to winter their boat in, in, in the Arctic, in the ice, and, it, and just to experience it. <laughs> yes, yes, it's called North to the Night by Alvin Simon, the in winter yeah, it's quite in the Arctic, yes. Uh, Which divorce did lawyer did they use? Huh? Uh, but I think we have to. I think we do, and if you have more questions, I know Richard would be happy to sit here and talk to you for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here, so uh, check out my website, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm here, so. Uh, no yeah, he has a me. video of the... Uh, wow, can I put that on? Yeah, yeah. You, you can leave. I mean, He'll just put the on. video on of his uh, little venture on New Year's Day on his Grampian 26 mm -hmm. out of, what yacht club were you in? Uh, Frenchman's Bay Marina, I think. Right. Frenchman's Bay Marina, and, and so. So a big thank you, Richard, for sharing with us your experiences and taking us on your voyages and also looking at different ways that one can travel on the ocean, even if you don't have your own boat. And so a little token of our appreciation again. I think you must have a few of those now. I, I like them all, though. And uh, Richard will rejoin us uh, in January or February, I can't remember which, and he will uh, share with us his adventures around Newfoundland. And so, coming up next week, we have Bill Bielkowski, and he returns to entertain us for the third time, celebrating Canadian naval aviators since 1914. This session was canceled last year because of weather again. And, um, oh, that's not next week, that's the week after. And then uh, next week is Rob Mazza. And he will be talking to us this time about inductions into the Canadian Sailing Hall of Fame. And again, this was a canceled session last year. We had two canceled sessions because of weather. Keep your fingers crossed that that does not happen. And with that, I'm so.